Not so high this time. There, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings friends! Recently, my family and I took a trip to Missouri. And while we were on that trip, we had the opportunity to hang out with White House on the hill. And we had a great time hanging out with Jake, Becky, and the rest of their wonderful family. Since our trip, Becky gave birth to their first little girl. But while we were on that trip, she was still pregnant. And while she was pregnant, her and Jake were showing us around their place and it was so neat to be able to see it in a way that you normally don't get to see on YouTube. Be able to see it firsthand and have a full tour of their place. So in this video today, I'm going to share with you part of our tour at White House on the Hill. And the tour started with their repurposed shed that they call the Brooding Shed. And here's what they have on the inside of that shed. There's Tennessee red uh, quail, there's button quail, and some baby guineas. Then we have this hatch shop. Uh, kind of our brooding, our brooding shed. We bring all the baby animals or injured animals. So everything that you're raising in here are these pets, or will they be consumption or a combination of both? Uh, both the quail. We never really were into quail. Uh, just really small, and we didn't really see a purpose, but. Our viewers saw differently, and so we had a viewer that sent us uh, like five or six of these Tennessee red quail, and then we had another viewer that sent us uh, like 20 hatching eggs for the button quail, and so while we tried to stay away from quail, our viewers just <laughs> made us get into it. So, um, uh, so they're not really, they're both just for fun. We're not really sure what we're going to do with them. The, uh, the, the pheasants back here, these were ones that we have shot this year, and so we've got some viewers that wanted to buy these. So they were some extras, and then we just hatched out these in the last week. Uh, one guinea and two pheasants. From watching their YouTube channel and from spending time here, I can really tell you that Jake is a bird man. They have all kind of birds here and various types of birds here on this homestead. So from the brooder, where everything starts, he next us to show us his We pigeons. did a deal with somebody last year, traded away some pheasants for a breeding pair. We got one baby from them, which the baby is that one up there. So there's two males here and the one female over here. So the pigeons that are out, they won't fly away, fly away? They, they, they just come. fly around, they just do some laps and then fly away. We tried to do some homing training with them last year and we would take them a distance away and then have them fly back. And they did really good up until about nine miles. And then something happened. They got hit by a hunter or by hawks. And the only the one out of like five came back home. And so we stopped uh, training at that time. And then we've just flown them around the property since then. But we really wanted to get them up because we'd heard people would fly them 100 or 200 miles. Wow. So we eventually wanted to get up to that, but we need to get more because we only have two right now. That's pretty neat. And from the pigeons, we went over to one of the animals that they have on the homestead that is not a bird, but it's one that they are doing a really neat job in raising. So we got these guys uh, beginning of early last year, a little over a year now. They're, they were mini pigs when we first got them. The viewer reached out to us that, um, that raises them. And uh, wanted to bring them here so we we took on pigs that way. They're uh, they're not for food. They're just for fun. But they eat all our food scraps. So we give them a lot of milk. And so now they're not so many, not so many mini pigs. And Barbie's really friendly. Oreo's kind of scared of me. So we've tried to train them to. We have one of these that's like it's got the the nipple water, but they never. We haven't been able to get them to use it, so we just fill this up and pour it out for them. Problem is they want to bathe in whatever we put out for them, so they knock it out all throughout the day. So we're still working on the water situation. Pigs expressing their pigness. Just rolling around trying to get in something. <laughs> We've, they used to get all, out all the time. We now use these, uh, 
think these are for hanging like targets for gun shooting that we got off Amazon, but for T-posts. Um, but we were always using zip ties, uh, zip ties oh, yeah. to tie this fencing in. And now that they're getting big, they always, they push it out so they could eat more grass. They push it out and they end up breaking the zip ties. And so then they'd start escaping through the crevices. And so we got these so it would hold them in. But we used to just let them wander around, which wasn't a big deal. They don't, they just wander around the property and follow us around like a big dog. But they, uh, they poop everywhere. And so we'd always find poop was a lot worse than our dogs. And so we were tired of like picking up the poop all over the yard. So how do you like your shelter over there for the pigs? It looked pretty neat. Yeah, we did this, something like this down for our ducks down by the pond too, something very similar. So we were just trying to come up with something that a couple pigs could go in and that would be pretty easy to move. Hey! Something that would be pretty easy to move around, so that was kind of the concept for that. But yeah, it works good. A lot of things, we, we reused this tin, the metal sheeting on top. We had an old garage that was up there that was in really bad shape that we tore down. We had a lot of metal off that that we've used for a lot of our animal shelters. We used it on our chicken coop over there and we used it on here. And so we've got this metal sheeting on like everything. And then we also found some back in a, in a ditch somewhere in the back of the property where the old owners would dump all their trash. And so we've been pulling just dozens of this metal sheeting and reusing it all over the place. There you go, recycling. So what all do you use the pigs for? Do you use them as uh, garbage disposals as yes. well as for meat? We used, to give our, we used to give our food scraps to the chickens. Now they just get chicken feed pretty much. So we, we give all our food scraps to the pigs. So we bring out all the, the extra milk every day and then all of our other extra food we bring out in the morning and, and they eat it up. Yeah. So they're just for fun. These guys are, they won't be for meat. We might get some pigs for meat at some point, but they're just kind of a fun animal to have. There we go. So still a pet with a purpose though, is just to take care of your, your scraps, your food scraps. And yeah. Now do you have to supplement their their, their diet with anything or mostly we, just scraps? We do give them some, uh, this is like mini pig feed, so it doesn't like over fatten them or anything, but so we give them some of that every morning and night. To make sure they get some things that they would normally need. If we ever start doing pigs, I think I would want to go with these. There's They're small. Looks like it's easy to, easier to manage and work with. They're not bad. They don't root too often. Occasionally they get a little bit if they get some wet ground, but they've been good. Otherwise, Cooney Coonies is probably what I'd go with. Because yeah, we've seen like Dan at the Grassfed Homestead and some guys that get the kinds that'll root and just tear up a whole area and we just definitely don't want that. Yeah, and they're escaping on you and you got all kinds of different problems. You definitely don't want your fruit trees getting uprooted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then after the pigs, we got to see their really fancy chicken coop. All right, so this chicken coop we built about a year and a half ago. Um, we had just been using chicken tractors for our chickens when we moved to this property. We brought about 30 chickens here. We sold most of our chickens when we moved here. And then we wanted to build something mobile. And so we came up with, I was trying to find like a trailer that I could build it on and I couldn't find anything exactly the right dimensions I wanted. And so I was talking to her dad and he, he works in a, he owns a car shop and he's a welder. And so he said, if I got the materials, he'd show me how to weld it. And so I welded the, the trailer so I could drive it on the road. And then we just built it from there. And we had a few viewers that sent us some, some of their chicken coops at home and they gave us some good ideas on what to do. But basically I have it set up for a rainwater collection that goes into that barrel. And then that feeds into this container that we got from Premier One that it just automatically fills every day. Um, we've got solar on the, on the flip side of this up top. So we did a deal with Renogy. Um, with the solar up there and so that uh, captures power for the lights we have lights on the outside underneath each overhang and then we have lights on the inside and then we have outlets if we need it if we need to like 
heat a water or something in the winter. Um, we were gonna power the, the chicken door on it, but the chicken door company said they didn't like solar power being used on it, and so we just used battery power. They said it was just too inconsistent and it might short their door out, so. And then we got the automatic chicken door from Chicken Guard, and, and that's been working great. And so that lets them out every day, so they, they automatically come out, they automatically have water. We have an automatic feeder over there that um, holds about 50, 60 pounds of feed. We bring them feed, but that at least gets them started so we don't have to be here right when they get out. So food, water, shelter, um, they got the nesting boxes on the side, and so we tried to make everything as automated as we could on, on this one. So we do come out and see them every day and make sure it closes up, and then we come and get the eggs each day, but we don't have to do a whole lot for this other than move it maybe once every couple months. It looks like you can get in there pretty easy with, you got a door there? We got a door. Do you actually use that? We actually use it. Oh, wow. Oh, we got a little bird in there. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe it took me a month or two, not this last winter, but the previous winter to, to get it all built. We keep about, there's about 50 chickens and one duck that stay in here. We tried to move that duck down to the pond with the other ducks, but she can fly and so she always comes back here. She thinks she's a chicken actually. <laughs> yeah, she'd rather be with the chickens than with the ducks. So She'll fly down she, every once in a she while. She flies around to other, she hangs out with the turkeys sometimes and with the smaller chickens. So she goes around, she hangs out in the orchard sometimes. It's really shaded there. So she just kind of goes wherever she wants, but she always ends up back here every night. She's a free bird. Yeah. <laughs> so what variety, uh, different varieties of chickens do you all have? We have just, so of 50 chickens, there's probably about 40 breeds in there. There's very few that are duplicated. So there's quite a few. Okay. I could show you and we'd have to name them, but I can't remember. So there's an Austral Orbs. Some of the basics, the Lavender Orpington. We've got a White Morans. We've got a Cream Leg Bar. Um, let's see. Red shoulders. No, hang on. This one. Uh, what do we got? That's a Moran. Is that a white Moran's? I don't know. She doesn't have the. Oh. She doesn't have the, the feathered, feathered feet. feet. Can't remember what other white breed we have there. So, do you have any particular favorites, or are you just like going with an assortment? So we love Cochins. Cochins are our favorite. They're the friendliest. Um, well, you'll see other chickens at our Bantam flock and then at our, our teenage chicken coop. And so those have a lot of our favorite favorites, but um, as far as out here, Amber is our Americana. Um, she's our favorite out here. She's one of our oldest chickens. Um, who else out here do we always look for? And then uh, we, right, now, right now we're doing a breeding project with our I Am Chimani's. And so Johnny Cash is our head rooster, the man in black. And so he he's over there right now, but otherwise he's, the Ayam Chimani's are also a, a favorite of ours. They're beautiful birds. Yeah. And we don't even consume any of these eggs from this flock because we get so many eggs from the Bantam flock, from the little chickens. And so usually we eat all the Bantam eggs and then these we just put in cartons and we end up selling most of the eggs that come from here. So I really hadn't heard of Bantams producing a lot of eggs, but yours really do. Yeah. Seems like we get enough for the family. We get six or seven every day from about 20 chickens over there. So it's more than than we go through every week. So that, we, you'll see when we go in the house, there's a basket with 100 eggs in it. That's from the Bantams. We just can't keep up with that one. Wow. So, and uh, what size of eggs do they lay? They're, most of them are a little smaller. Okay. If they do lay a bigger one, we'll end up putting it in the egg basket so it can go with the other eggs. But usually but it's like two, two, two eggs. Two bantams to, yeah. to one regular egg, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what time of day do you typically gather the, the eggs? We'll do it right at night. Mm -hmm. um, so we usually wait till about dark, about dark or just before dark, we'll come go around because our cow won't go in until it's dark. And so we try to get her in because we milk her every morning and then uh, right before dusk, like all the chickens will go in. So we just wait till everybody's in to make sure that everything closed up good for them so they're safe.
Well, there was so much going on there at White House on the Hill, I'm not able to fit it all in this video. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for another video or two of everything that we saw during our time there visiting Jake and Becky. He really is a bird man, so he has some rare birds that we had the opportunity to see firsthand, as well as the big plants that he has for this aviary that he showed us, as well as emus. It's my first time really hanging out with emus, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And I got to milk their cow, and you'll just have to see what happened when we were milking the cow. But stay tuned. We'll see you next time.